Hey everybody, welcome back. This is Miss Faye and this is my world. Today's topic is incest is a generational curse. Incest is a generational curse. Before we get started, I want to say welcome. Welcome to the channel. Welcome to all the new viewers, the new subscribers, and welcome to you who have been with me from the beginning. I really appreciate you. Now, I did pull a video to talk about the generational curses, and we have a letter. So let's watch this short video. Then we're going to read the letter and see what she says. Okay, here we go. You can most definitely inherit demons. Y'all just call them generational curses. Have you ever noticed how some ailments or vices run in people's families? Like alcoholism, uh, overeating, addiction. These things are no coincidence and are to be taken very seriously. They're generational curses. Here's how you can detect them. You can simply look at your parents and what they're struggling with. Of course, it takes great effort and concentration to get rid of a generational curse. It's like evicting a stubborn tenant who thinks they own the place. But the way to do it is to starve them. Yup, starve them out. Which is tough, because their desires are your desires. They like to smoke, drink, binge watch TV shows, overeat, anything that you would find enjoyable. But you have to have enough discipline to find out exactly what it is that demon wants and eliminate it until it has no reason to stay in your body, thus breaking the generational curse. It's almost like removing oxygen to draw out a parasite that's been feeding on your bloodline. It's easier said than done. Okay, let's dive into this letter. Three weeks ago, I picked up the phone and called my daughter after not talking to her for almost a year. She suggested I come by because my granddaughter had been asking about me. When I arrived, he was in the process of leaving and as he walked past me, I felt the evil in this man. Okay, uh, this man that you're talking about is your wife's husband, okay? I just want to clear that up so we all be on the same page. I strongly feel he knows. I know he is molesting my granddaughter. She is seven. And there is nothing I can say to my daughter to convince her that he is molesting my granddaughter. Well, <laughs> you know, we did uh, talk about this, this letter before. And uh, I don't think it's going to make a difference uh, whether you, you know, your granddaughter knows or not. I think she knows already. But apparently, it's not an issue for her. As I, as I was preparing to leave, my granddaughter was eating dinner with no top or undershirt on. Okay, now your granddaughter is seven. Okay. Which I thought was strange, but I didn't say anything. When I heard my daughter say to my granddaughter, stop playing with your nipples. With a smile in her voice, I slowly turned around, looked at my daughter chopping up vegetables in the kitchen and walked over to my granddaughter. She was taking her forefinger and thumb and squeezing her nipples. <laughs> Wait a minute. You know she learned that somewhere. Somebody has been doing that to her. Okay. And you say here you believe that her father has been molesting her. Well, somebody has been squeezing her nipples and her mother knows about it. Her, her mother knows this is not foreign. Her nipples were so pronounced, they looked like a woman's nipples preparing for sex. I said, you playing with your nipples? She immediately dropped her head. Yeah, because see, something is going on in that house that you are not aware of and it's sexual okay it's sexual and it's probably coming from him 
You see, he's got everybody under his spell. And he may be having sex with both of them together. You don't know. You don't know what's going on there. I became so disoriented. I couldn't find my backpack or my keys. And they were in plain sight. I know that screwed you up. It would screw me up too. If I saw my granddaughter over there playing with her nipples. And she's just seven years old. Okay. By this time, my granddaughter left the table to kiss me goodbye. And when she kissed me, she kissed me on the lips. And her lips slightly open. Oh, boy. <laughs> it is definitely something going on here. And the look in her eyes was fear. I can't describe the pain that gripped my chest. I was overwhelmed with pain and anger, and my heart started racing. I was so distraught, I could barely speak. I know you could. Now, your daughter, your granddaughter, who is just seven, who is just seven, she is showing you what she has learned from someone else. Okay? She's showing you what she has learned from someone else. Younger kids, they do that. Because they don't really have a handle on what's going on. And, and they are believing that it's normal behavior. Because somebody is doing it to them and making them feel like it's normal. So now when they come to you, they want to show you what they've learned. And uh, parent, parents, really, this is how you can tell if your children have been molested. Because they will try it on you. They will show you what they've learned. Okay? When my daughter met this man, he didn't have anything. My daughter told me his parents were constantly moving in with his grandfather. This was a constant cycle with his parents. So his parents didn't have anything either. Okay? To the point where he would live with his best friend and his mom off and on for years. Okay, so it seems like your daughter's husband came from a very dysfunctional home. That's what, it, that's what it seems like to me. Always at the mercy of other people for a place to live. His own home life wasn't stable. They had to move around a lot. When he moved in to my daughter's townhouse, he was working at Walmart and didn't have anything. Your daughter chosen. Your daughter accepted him in to her life with nothing. This was your daughter's decision. And everything your daughter does is still her decision. And you, mom, you need to come to the realization that it really is out of your hands. It's out of your hands. She chose this man with nothing. And she's still with him. Even though your granddaughter is showing signs that she has been molested. And um, you believe that it's her father that is molesting her. The job he has now is a firefighter as a result of my daughter pulling strings to get him hired. My cousin's husband was a captain with the fire department. Okay, so he got a decent job. But still, if he is molesting your granddaughter, <laughs> is a curse. You see, incest is a generational curse. And it's quite possible 
that it came through his family. This incest came through his family. And it's quite possible because his family was very dysfunctional. My granddaughter is only seven. And this is his child. My daughter is 32. And he is a few years older than her. They met in college. And she was his tutor. He didn't finish college. But she has two associate degrees. A BA and a business degree. And you say down here. That the Holy Spirit revealed to you. That he's on the DL. On top of that. On top of that. You believe he's on the DL? All right. Let's look at this. All right. If you're. Is this a man that is just dating your daughter? Or are they married? This is what I was trying to see here. If your daughter actually is married to this man. Or if they're just living together. Or what. But. In any regard. This is something that your, your daughter chose. For her life. Alright. And if she's still with this man. She plans to stick it through. Now whether the man has molested your daughter. Your granddaughter. Or if someone else has molested your granddaughter. It's, you know. You believe. That. Uh, this man. I don't know if this is your son-in-law. Or just your daughter's boyfriend. But you believe. That he. Is the molester. And you believe he's on the DL. Well he could be. He could be, and he could be a narcissist. Okay, and you know that narcissists are evil. Narcissists are pure evil. And narcissists are just about supply. If he is a narcissist, it's quite possible that he could be on the DL. But if he is a narcissist, he's only out for supply. And narcissists do Engage in incestual activity. I have a hard time saying it. Incestual activity. The narcissist. They're evil. And incest is a generational curse. This is something that travels in the family. Okay. And it's quite possible it's travel from his family. He came from a dysfunctional family. They didn't have a stable place going around and whatever. It's quite possible that he's a narcissist from the trauma that he suffered growing up. It's quite possible that he was molested growing up. See, you don't really know the background with this. But the whole thing is, you are worried about your daughter. And it's a sad situation. Your daughter is a grown woman, able to make her own decisions. And she has a daughter. And it seems like that your daughter is not alarmed about what's going on with your granddaughter at all. That's a tough situation to be in. And my advice to you, and I told you this before, is to walk away and love yourself. And just send them love. Because you cannot change him. And you cannot change her. I don't care how much you talk. I don't care how much you cry. Or plead. Or whatever. You can't change people. People have to decide that they want to change. And once you understand that. It will set you free. Once you understand that. You got to let it go. Let it go. 
You say in the letter that you hadn't even been talk, you hadn't even talked to your daughter in about a year. I think that's what you said. And you picked up the phone to call your daughter. She didn't pick up the phone to call you. You reached out to her, which means that she's not looking for any help. She probably already knows how you feel because you said in another letter, I believe, that you had already written her twice about this man and your granddaughter. But she doesn't want to hear it. She doesn't want to hear what you have to say. She doesn't care what you have to say. So the best that you can do is care about yourself. About yourself. And like I said, that generational curse, if somebody in that line does not stop that incest, it will continue from your granddaughter to her kids to their kids and their kids. It's a curse in the family. It's a curse. And it's quite possible that this man brought this curse into your bloodline with your granddaughter. You have to love yourself. You really can't. <laughs> you can't change other people. There's nothing you can do about it. And you know, the thing about it is this incest is evil. And it's running in a lot of families. A lot of families have incest occurring. Family members sleeping with family members. That is so wrong. And uh, the awful thing about it is many of these people who engage in this activity claim to be religious. They claim to be religious. I've seen it. It's evil. It's evil. And it's a curse. People, if you have this in your family, try to break that curse. Because it will destroy your family. Destroy you. I hope that you understand the message today. Incest it's not just, you know, something that families do. You keep it secret. You know, keep it together. Keep it secret. It's a curse. It's an evil curse. And once you understand that, then you work on yourself and rise above it. Don't embrace these things. And if this is happening in your family, speak out about it. You know, a lot of times... Family members don't say anything, you know. They don't, they don't say anything about these things, but they should. It should be open. It should be rooted out of the family. These curses have been continuing because people don't talk about it. They don't even talk about it if a baby pops up out of it. They just go on with life like, it, you know, covering it up. And just continuing this evil activity. People, I hope that you understand the message today. Incest is evil. It's pure evil. Now, those of you who have questions that you would like for me to answer, my email address is in the description. And also, uh, those of you who are looking for your affirmations, also check the link in the description. I want to thank you so much for supporting this channel. Thank you so much for your comments and your letters. And a special thank you to those that leave a donation. I really appreciate all of you. I wish you all the very best. And I really hope to see you next time.